Do you have the problem that you love drawing street scenes and architecture, but you can't draw people? If that's you, then this video is just for you because figures literally bring a scene to life, particularly a streetscape. Generally, streets are made to at least sometimes bustle with people. How do we draw people when we don't want to draw people? Because there's another good reason why, why adding figures to our architectural drawing makes a lot of sense. The first being, of course, that for many streetscape scenes, people are a natural part of the scene. The second very important reason is that figures also give a sense of scale. So these very small figures down here give an idea of just how large this Prague church is. Consider these two very similar drawings of St. Sulpice in Paris. In the left-hand drawing, the effect is just the church. In the right-hand drawing, we have all these figures which give a much stronger sense of just how large this church is. And even with grand interiors, in these again very similar views of the grand staircase in the Palais Garnier in Paris, the one on the left with the closer figures grouped together into a more visually prominent effect creates a very different feel of bustle and activity and of the building in a sense in its natural state for a performance than the picture on the right. We can locate figures so they're not terribly prominent and allow the eye to concentrate on other elements of the scene. Here's my first tip. Have some references on hand for two reasons. The first is for practice because when we just have five or ten minutes we can quickly sketch quite a crowd. If we practice figures on their own then we don't have the pressure of being afraid to spoil a drawing that we've almost already completed. And the other thing is if we're drawing from a reference photo or even from life, the people may be moving too fast or the poses that the figures have in our reference may be awkward or not work well with the scene. I never hesitate to either rearrange where people are in my street or to swap them completely for some other people. And I'd recommend not to print references for streetscape figures too large because the biggest danger is that we try and draw too much detail of our figures. And if we can't see the detail as clearly in our reference, we won't be tempted to somehow try and put all of those little ins and outs and details and pockets and features and bald spots and backpack straps on the much more gestural figures that we need to draw. Let's start to draw. Now, my second point is to simplify our figures. I like to think in terms of head, and if I'm going to add any features, if it's a figure that's quite close, that's probably as far as I'll go. And then there's torso. And then I don't draw the arms until I've drawn the legs in. When it comes to drawing the legs, where there's a stride in straight leg, always draw that one first. So there we have our figure. I certainly wouldn't get involved with trying to put stripes or checks on a figure such as this. And in all likelihood, this would be the closest figure we would see in one of my drawings. If the figure was further back in the distance, then I'd be drawing with even less lines than with this one. It's worth remembering firstly that heads are not round. Don't draw a round head. And that there is a neck, which I usually prefer not to draw because they end up looking fussy and awkward. And then if we think of from neck to the waist, it's important to remember that the legs do not come from the waist. There is a section below the waist. And yes, there are elbows and knees. I try not to get too caught up with those because then I try and overdraw them. With the scale I'm drawing figures at, keeping it simple works better. Now the most straightforward figures to draw if we're not confident, are figures walking away from us. Now I usually give some indication of how far down I'm wanting to go with this. Again, it's best not to get too caught up in fabric fold marks.
I find with figures it's important to use hatching or tone work to help create distinction between where one figure is and another figure is. And you'll notice I've drawn this one with a lighter touch because the further away we go, the lighter our figures need to be because we're seeing less detail. And suddenly with just a minute of quick, very suggestive outlining, we've created a whole crowd and yet we've only had to pay too much attention drawing three of all these figures. My third point is always watch out for a few basic accessories we can put on our figures. If we look at this scene, bags are great. Over the shoulder straps are an easy to draw and very identifiable thing. And there's another item of clothing hanging over the front. And so this is certainly enough. Particularly for figures that are closer, then hats can also be a good way to go. The fourth thing I adopt with my figures to keep them simple is I limit myself basically to one pose per figure. So for instance, this person here, that pose is just one leg bent back. One trick I use often, because figures aren't my strong point either, is where I look at the figure and think, well, his bottom half is not really long enough for his top half. is to change a pair of shorts into jeans with this figure here. Again, one pose. So we get a sense of movement. My fifth point is to always try and create a sense of depth using our figures. Because we have an innate sense of how large figures are and how they look at greater and greater distances. Figures are a great way of demonstrating distances. So use figures to create a wonderful sense of space, of depth. As we saw in this scene, by placing all the figures farther back in the mid plane of this interior and also right back in the far distance of this interior, we really magnify the sense of depth where the detail in this floor paving suggested in the front connects with the scale of the figures that then take us right back into the distance. While we're thinking of one basic pose, this counts as a basic pose where to show the effect of one leg being lifted up and bent backwards behind, in effect, one leg is shorter than the other, and while the foot on the forward leg looks a bit more like a horse's hoof, on the leg which is bent back, we're looking more down onto the shoe, and so we get more of a paddle effect. If someone is running, then the forward stride leg comes out at more of an angle and that backward leg disappears more because it's flung up more so there's more curled up, it's up higher. And if the figures are walking away from you, it looks much the same. But if we're going to use figures to portray a sense of depth, then we have to remember the most fundamental perspective rule with figures, which is that if all our figures are on level ground, and if we're on level ground looking at them, then all the heads will line up on eye level. Now this is true if everyone is the same height and we're that same height as well. So in practice, there's a small amount of variation. Because on average, most people are an average height, most heads will roughly line up. But if there's a child, 
then their head will be lowered down. And the exact height will depend on how tall they are and where they stand in relation to each other. And this is where it's best just to observe our reference and line up where the children are with where they are in the reference. But we can see that this little boy is ahead of his dad because his feet are higher. What happens with the adults of average size is because their heads all line up on eye level, it's their feet that shift position. And so the further back we go and the smaller the figures become, the feet end up higher and higher or closer and closer to eye level. Here's a little bonus tip. Use hatching on our figures on their clothing to adjust where our first line isn't quite in the right place. And if we really don't like drawing faces, then all the closer figures can be walking away from us. But my final tip is to practice just figures. Without the pressure of a beautiful background that we're afraid to spoil by doing a really distorted looking face on someone in the front. This drawing of the Arc du Carousel in Paris is a good example of flat level ground with all of the heads lining up, whether it's these figures closest to us or not as far away, or whether it's the figures much further away in front of and inside the arc itself, or people right in the distance where they really are just a little suggestion of head, body and limbs. Always allowing, particularly with figures that are on the same plane, drawing one a different size to the other because that's how it is in life. So we don't need to have deserted streets looking like the zombie apocalypse has come. We can populate them with nice easy gestural drawings and we can bring them as close to the front as our drawing confidence lets us. But we can certainly start with this level and then bring them closer and closer as we become more experienced drawing them. I'm Stephen Travers. G'day. So put off figures no longer. And remember, we're not doing exact figure drawing. We're wanting to suggest figures and suggest a few natural looking poses because they are part of a bigger overall picture that we're constructing. We don't want them to be the center of attention in themselves.